Eight houses are often avoidance. Did you know that every single avoidant I ever encountered was an eight houser and that in my profession, when I get an eight house client, that I think between 70 and 90% of the time, the person has been in the past an avoidant, if they heal from it, or they are an avoidant, which most of the time they are. The eight house. This is a house in astrology that is known for being secretive. When you place the sun or moon there, that means that that part of your life has to be secret. Has to be. Why? Because there's something about you that if it ever saw the light of day, it would be very dangerous for you. Maybe you would lose finances. Maybe you would lose your, your possessions. Maybe you break the law. Maybe you are a very selfish person. Maybe you are a very dark character. Imagine you play a video game, right? This is a video game. So you can play a class. Imagine you, you, you choose the rogue class or the shadow mage or the, the necromancer. You know, anything that's just like shady, a shady class. And this class is based on stealth. It's based on uh, avoidance or distance, you know, where you have to attack people from a, from a safe distance where they can't reach you, where nobody can touch you, nobody can hurt you because you're safe, right? Like a mage is also like an eight house or like from a distance. <laughs> you know how there's like in World of Warcraft, there's ice mages and they just, they shoot at you and they do frost nova to keep you stuck where you freeze in your position and you can't touch them, you can't do anything. So they are safe from you. And if you get too close, they just put themselves in an ice block and become untouchable. That's an eight houser. Now that you understand what this archetypically represents, you understand that if you place a lot of planets into the eight house, it makes a person very secretive makes a person very carefree to avoid judgment, to avoid prosecution, to avoid being hurt, to avoid being vulnerable, right? The rogue uses stealth. The mage uses long distance attacks. The archer, the huntress, they lay traps so you don't get too close. And that is why most of the time, somebody with prominent eight house planets is an avoidant. It's just energy. It's just when you are born as a sneaky, shady character, you have a tendency to do very sneaky, shady things. Lying, manipulating, obfuscating, hiding yourself, hiding your social media presence hiding behind a fake profile picture, revealing as little information about yourself as possible. So you have the upper hand. So you are in a competitive mindset in which you assume that everybody is out to get you and you have to be on guard. You have to maintain your distance. You have to be careful because you is just who you are. If you reveal yourself, attacks will come. So that's why the eight house are in its shadow. I'm only talking about shadows here. Yeah? So don't take it personal. Don't get your knickers in a twist, accusing judges the astrologer of being anti anti eight house, blah, 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 because you're so stuck in your ego that you can't even appreciate the truth just because it hurts you, just because you don't like it, just because it doesn't apply to you because you're already healed, right? If you're really healed, you would know that this is true before you healed. 
<laughs> but if you're unhealed, you don't know it's true. Or maybe you do, but you it's all you've ever known. So you need to justify it. You need to, you need to continue doing it because you don't know what else to do. And that's the definition of just not being healed, which is okay. We can be imperfect. We can make mistakes. This video is not to attack eight housers. Yeah, I'm not here to judge anybody, to prosecute anybody. I'm here to talk the truth that people who encounter a lot of eight house energy in their life is because they're dealing with a specific theme of emotional unavailability, coldness, distancing, sneakiness, shadiness. All of these things fall into the eighth house. Of course, there's much more to the eighth house, but that's not what this video is about. This video is specifically about avoidant attachment. So what is avoidant attachment actually? Avoidant attachment is if somebody takes their wants and needs and buries them. When, th when their needs and wants are not being met in a relationship with another person, instead of talking about it and, and asking their partner to, to please help them fulfill their needs, they bury them. They bury their feelings for their partner and they either ghost you, they stonewall you, or they just... They, they say, I need space, which is, of course, what they love to say. Oh, my goodness, I love it so much. Because, of course, you can't touch them. You can't say anything to them. They are now in a position in which they are invulnerable. Like the ice mage in World of Warcraft who puts himself in an ice block, in a shell, in which nobody can get close to them because... The eight house of fears vulnerability. If you have the eight house sun, if you have eight house Mercury, eight house moon, eight house Venus, doesn't matter what is in the eight house. That planet fears being exposed. That planet fears being seen, being naked. Because it means that everybody can see your dependency, your needs, your ambition, your wants, your desires, your finances. The eight house is the basement house. We bury in the basement. We take our things in our warehouse and we store them away. We don't have to deal with them. Again, this is only about the shadow. This is not about eight house higher expression. Eight house shadow, if it's the sun in the eight house, buries themselves, buries their identity, who I am is not allowed to be seen because my mother, or most likely my father, is a control freak, is a judgmental motherfucker, so I have to hide my son. And my subconscious has been programmed, my nervous system has been hijacked, has been conditioned to assume that everybody is out to get me. And the moment I show my identity, I will be under attack. So hide it, I bury it. I avoid it. And if I'm healed, if I deal with all these abandonment fears, these abandonment wounds, I bring it out of the basement and I am reborn. Because the eight house is about rebirth. Rebirth happens only after you are dead. <laughs> oh my God, to state the obvious. When you are dead, which is buried, right? Underground, in the grave, in the eight house, you have to heal before you can become a secure, attached person. Now, if you are an eight horser and you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you have already healed all of that, then you don't need to listen to anything I say. But even if you are healed, you know at least one person who is an eight horser who is not healed. And here, finally, you get the information why. Finally, some, some astrologer, because I've never heard anybody talk about this, finally one astrologer tells you what's going on and why the eighth house so often, like all the fucking time, expresses as a void and attachment. That planet 
is what the person is burying. And that person, only themselves, can unbury it. Because it takes a tremendous amount of energy, of vulnerability, accountability, self-reflection, self-awareness, to get yourself out when you're already down, when you're already dead. How are you going to get back up? Like the snake that sheds its skin. And so many are not willing to shed their skin. So many are tied and attached to their identity. That they have to be a certain way. Don't show that side of you. Only show this side. Like love and light in spiritual bypassing. Only be positive, right? That's what you see often many 8 houses being super positive. Super like, no, no, no. I didn't mean that. Uh, oh, you, you, you feel offended? I, 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 I don't mean that. No, 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 no. Meanwhile, they do mean that. But they casually lie. They casually deceive because they are dead. And only they can bring themselves up again. Resurrection. Life. Only comes to those who are willing to heal. And guess what? Most people are not. So therefore, most 8 houses you will ever encounter in your life will be avoided motherfuckers. And avoidance means I take my feelings for you and I bury them. I, I, you hold me accountable. You tell me that I did something wrong. I avoid accountability. I stonewall. I ghost you. I say I need space. I remove myself from you. I cast my frost nova as the World of Warcraft mage and you are stuck and I'm gone. I am blinking out of here. Teleporting. Because I don't deal with the basement. I don't unbury what's buried. It's buried for a reason. It's buried because I've been told that it is wrong. So people with 8 house placements, they've gone through hell. They've been told that this part of a personality should never see the light of day. Because if it did, it would. the people around the 8 house are would be forced to transform. They would have to leave the eight houser because they're not compatible. Because, because the eight houser lives in the swamp. And in the swamp you find the parasites, the critters, the cockroaches, those who are stuck in the mud. The eight houser's job is to be in the swamp, to get those from the swamp out of the swamp. But many eight houses are very comfortable in the swamp. And you coming to them and telling them to show themselves to be vulnerable is not going to do anything. If hiding themselves is their comfort zone, then this is where she, they shall dwell. And they shall remain there until they get an authority reading with me. <laughs> and I tell them why they are there and how to get out of there. Because how do you get out? Well, the eight house is all about vulnerability. The eight house is your ability to regenerate. That means it's your ability to cope with loss, with destruction. But be careful because that ability to cope with loss can be used against you. That you will allow yourself to lose yourself because that is what the environment requires. To be the sacrificial lamb. To be a passive bystander. To be a part of a swamp. But that same energy, that same quality, that soil quality, that is so the eighth house, can be used to get that person out. But the person has to choose. That is why I always say, if you are avoidant, it's a choice. If you tell people that you need space from them, which leaves them sitting in their juices where they have to wonder what the fuck they did wrong, while they can't talk to you because you're ghosting, you're stonewalling, you're giving the cold shoulder, you are refusing to communicate, that's on you. It's a choice to do these things. 
to be a parasite, to be a part of a swamp, to be a malevolent entity, to be somebody who's only there to teach other people how to make boundaries and how to respect themselves because you don't respect them, because you're only thinking about yourself and you want to maintain control. Because the eight house is all about control. How do I control how I'm being perceived? How they see me? How they view me? Well, if I don't want them to see me in an unfavorable light, in a vulnerable position, I just say I need space and don't talk about everything that is vulnerable about me that could threaten and destabilize the relationship. Because the eight house is where things break down, where relationships break down. Eight houses are supposed to be experts in destroying relationships. Consciously, willingly. But most of the time they do it unconsciously. By saying I need space, by being an avoidant motherfucker. And this is for all houses. I will roast all of you houses. I will roast, roast my own house. So if somebody gets offended by this video, that's their problem. This, po this video isn't about demonizing eight houses. This video is about revealing and yeah. how astrology works. If you don't uh, see the shadow side of your own house, your own placements, how are you going to react when those shadows are triggered? How are you going to react when you feel like you just want to disappear, hide yourself, shut down, delete your social media? block uh, your partner after an argument, after a fight, when it's actually just a form of self-sabotage? How are you going to know that it's a self form of self-sabotage? How are you going to know that your feelings are playing a trick on you and your mind is trying to work against you? How do you know this if you don't know what I'm telling you in this video? But no, we want to attack Georges. We want to complain. We want to say, oh, there's only nice things to say about the eight house. There's only great things. And avoidance aren't so bad. It's not so bad to be avoidant. I, don't you see I'm getting away with it? Don't you see everybody allows me to say that I need space? Because I can just tell them that they're being selfish and that they're, they're being controlling because I'm shadow projecting my own controller onto them. Don't you see how it's working for me to be selfish? So why do you come along, judges, to try to ruin my party? Hmm? That's the kind of bullshit I'm dealing with. But if you have a lot of Aethos planets, and you are coming into the high expression, then you are the one to see as the first person, before even me, moi, and I'm the expert, if you have Aethos planets in the heat expression, you are going to see immediately when somebody is trying to play you, somebody is trying to hide from you, somebody is trying to fool you, to trade distance with you, to, to ghost you, to stonewall you. You know exactly what's going on. And you'll be the first to put them in their place, to hold them accountable. That's your job. Of course, your job can only be fulfilled if you hold yourself accountable, if you transform yourself. And then you transform others, and guess what happens? They are not going to like it, just like most people will not like what I say. They are not going to like you either. When you heal as the eight horser, people will not react kindly to somebody who's trying to change them, who's trying to tell them that they're doing something wrong, and that if they want a relationship with you, they can't be allowed to get away with it. Because the eight house erodes relationships. And if you don't know this, every house in astrology, it destroys the previous house. It dissolves it. It weakens it. It destabilizes it. The seventh house comes before eight. Seventh house is the house of contracts, agreements, marriage. So man, you, you lose so many relationships in your life. But ask yourself, why do you lose them? Do you lose them? Because you were the one who wanted the partner, the friend, to change? Or did you lose them because not only did you not even tell your partner that you wanted them to change, 
but you refuse to change yourself. So what is within is without. If you are changing yourself, you will want to change others. And the moment you do that, all those incompatible relationships will fall away. Everything that's not built on a solid foundation. Everything that cannot hold up to scrutiny. Because the eight houses where we deal with scrutiny, where we deal with what's shady, with what's incompatible, what's dirty, what's foul, what's stinking, like there's a stench to it. You know there's something off about this person that you're dealing with, but you don't know why. But your eight house is fully online because you're, you're ready to look at your own problems. You're, you're willing to self-reflect. So you can reflect on all those things that they are not willing to see. So if they don't want to see it, let them go. But if they do want to see it, then you'll become the shaman. You'll become the therapist. You'll be, become the person that is most hated <laughs> that, 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 to do the, un, do the thankless job of being a doctor, of taking in patients, people who need change because they're so stuck. Only somebody who knows how to get unstuck can help them. So if you know somebody who is an eight houser and they are the one who is being stuck, you know you're dealing with a pattern of avoidance and you know you're dealing with somebody who is just not willing to self-reflect or to, to take the, the hit, to let go what needs to be let go of about what they are holding on to because they're still looking for that approval, that validation, that money. Because that's the eight house. The eight house is all about other people's money, other people's energy, other people's love, other people's sex, which sometimes we can only get those services that narcissistic supply, you could say, if we are willing to lie to them, to manipulate them. Because chances are those suppliers that you have lining up aren't really compatible with you. And you need a real supplier. And you can only get the real supply if you are real yourself. And that is why often we find uh, posts like that of Teal Swan, who says, somebody who says that I need space is being inauthentic. <laughs> Chances are they're a motherfucking unhealed eight houser. Or somebody who is unhealed placements like Moon Conjunction Pluto, or Sun Conjunction Pluto, or what whatever. Because chances are, if you have healed those aspects, you'd be like, yeah, thanks, Georges. Now I can finally put the unhealed eight houses around me into their place and show them how a healed eight house looks like. Because I got the validation that I was looking for. Somebody told me that just because you have eight house planets doesn't mean that you're a hermit. Although you, you have the tendency, <laughs> it's, it's okay. It doesn't mean you are, uh, you are like a pile of mush that has to hide behind the corner and never be seen. You can be seen. And if somebody has a lot of social anxiety, a lot of avoidance, or they are just very fearful, or they're very dismissive of emotions, they get easily triggered. You know, it's not because they have eight house planets, but because the eight house planets are unhealed and they need therapy, they need help. And we can only help them if we understand what's happening and what the healed expression actually looks like. So that's the whole point of this videos. It's not about condemning anybody, but it's an observation that I've made. And I know one or two eight houses you know, <laughs> who I have as friends who have healed all these problems, who don't show these negative traits. So there's plenty of healed people out there. There's no excuse. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. zero. But of course, excuses is exactly what a victim is looking for. They're not looking to be accountable. They're not looking for the truth. They're just looking for, 
yeah, but can't you understand? I need my space and I need my privacy. To make it sound like the pathological behavior that we're stuck in is normal. But somehow this is healthy and there's nothing wrong with them. Right? Like a neurodivergent. <laughs> like somebody who uh, has mental health problems that, is, that are causing havoc in their lives, but somehow it's, it's not a problem. It's, everything's fine. Well, if everything's fine, nothing is going to change. And if you don't need change, then you don't need me, you don't need this video, you don't need... You're just fine. You're just happy. So if you get triggered by this content, is there maybe a part of you that isn't sure if you're really happy with the way things are? If this triggers you, maybe there's a part of you that is wondering, hmm, maybe I could do better. Maybe I should change. But if that part is in conflict with your other parts, it causes a tremendous amount of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance means your mind is, is produces anxiety. So how do you get rid of the anxiety? Two options. You change or you blame me. <laughs> and of course, it's much easier to blame me, right? Much easier. But if you don't want to blame me, and you want to know more about this, you can of course book a reading with me if you're interested in my services to know about your dynamics and your chat, your problems and what the healed expression looks like. You can check out my services in the description down below. You can check it also by messaging me. You can message me at any given time and request a reading. And if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.